Same guitars, but yet so different. Hey everybody, what's going on? I'm Eric C. Hope you guys are doing good. I'm doing just great. So you are looking at the new Firefly body. I'm going to end up stripping this down. I've got some parts coming in and uh, I've got some parts on hand that I'm going to end up doing some upgrades with this body here. The old body right now is still clamped up. I'm going to unclamp that today. But on this one here, the new one, I kind of want to do a little bit of a, um, maybe an experiment here. So I ended up getting a comment on my last video, oh, and thank you for the views. I never thought that video would get up to uh, 800 views, so I guess there's a lot of people who might be having the same issues looking for a fix or how to fix their guitar. Well, I'm going to do some changing with this one here, okay? And I'm going to do the same thing with the old one as well that I just uh, fixed the neck on. So here is the, the strap lock screw. Okay, it's about maybe an inch long. All right, not nothing really fancy. So part of that screw is inside of the strap lock itself. So you only have maybe maybe about a half inch or so that is sticking out. So that's a little bit of maybe the point of that screw that's going into the back of this neck. Not really enough to secure it. Not really enough to keep it in place. Um, and that's probably why that happened with the other body where it broke right at the neck joint, right at the neck pocket. So what I want to do is I want to drill this hole out and I want to introduce a new screw that is much longer. Just one, don't need several of them for this because it's basically glued into place. And what I want to do is prevent the same problem from happening with this one. So I'm going to drill out this hole. So I need to find a drill bit that I can use and it's going to be smaller than the diameter of the thread and possibly the same width of the shank that is on the screw. That way it could bite in there pretty good and not cause any issues. So I'm going to go through this body into the neck without going through the other side where the fretboard is. So what I want to see is how far I can get this drill bit inside of here without going into the neck. And it's, well, at least not into the fretboard itself. It's pretty, pretty much the whole, pretty much the whole drill almost. So I'm going to go ahead and, well, since I already know kind of where to stop, I'm not going to need this tape on here. Tape was basically just a guide Where I need to stop that, so I'm going to go ahead and put the drill in the drill bit, lock that in place. So I have to stop basically right where the tip of the chuck is. That's as far down as I got to go. Go in the right direction. That's it. All right, so I'm in the body, through the body, into the neck. And what I want to do is try to secure this a little bit more just to see if there is any gaps between the neck and the body. Could be a reason why this thing ended up breaking. So here's the little tip that I got and I'm going to cut it on an angle again just like it did before. Oh, cut too much off of it. Luckily I have a bunch of these that I can use. Alright, that will work just fine. Put that on top to, on the syringe. Make sure it's nice and tight. Open up my glue.
paper towel ready because I'm going to need it. Alright, so I'm kind of expecting that this is not going to really seep into too many cracks or anything because it really shouldn't be any. But this is just going to be a precaution. See, it's pushing back on me. I can't there's no open air, there's no spaces. So what I'm going to do is kind of feed that in there a little bit. Now I should have some glue inside there. I'll end up polishing this out later. And what I want to do is I'm going to put the strap lock on, put my washer back on, it's like a little rubber washer, it kind of reminds me of like the kick guitars. The screw is just a little bit bigger in diameter than the old one, but yet longer to get into that, get into that neck. So I got the screw in there with the wood glue. Let's get these two together here. And this should help with this neck problem from breaking it. At least one hopes. Alright, that's that. A little bit of wood glue sweeped out around the edges. Put this off to the side. And nothing came through to the other side of the fretboard. I don't even think the truss rod comes all the way down here. Probably stops somewhere around here. So that'll work out just fine and not be a problem. And it's also locking the neck in a lot better. So I can go ahead and get rid of my wood glue here. I gotta pick up some more of those syringes. Again, this is a little bit of a, an experiment just to see if this is gonna end up helping the situation of having this neck break again. And I'm gonna do the same thing to the other guitar. So, what I'm doing with this here is I'm gonna start stripping out some of the parts. Oh, and another comment said that the screws that were with the uh, patch cord were for this. I found this inside the box. It wasn't in with the guitar. It was on the outside between the styrofoam and the box itself. So it comes with a little bit of a pick guard. And to be honest, I don't know if I would use it or not. So Wally, that's up to you if you want me to install this or not. I kind of like it without pick guards. You know how I am without you know, a nice top. So what I want to do with this one here is I want to pluck out all of the uh, Everything that's on this body, I'm going to pluck it off of here. All the hardware, pickups, knobs, everything. Just everything's coming off. So what I'm going to do here is, where are my magnets? So I'm going to show you the little magnet trick. I'm pulling out some of these sleeves for your tune mag bridge and your tailpiece. So I've got the magnets on the bottom of here. And if I can get this to go in the hole, I'm going to stick it to it. And what I want to do is start turning this as the threads line up so I'm not cross threading it. I'm the magnet's sticking to the thread and it's making it kind of hard to do anything with. Right, so I got my screwdriver that's going to fit this. Start turning it. And what that's doing is it's pulling the sleeve right out. Really simple, really easy. Now, one of these is supposed to have a wire inside of it, and I do not see a wire in this hole. Let's go ahead and do this. This is a great trick. If you have, uh, let me see, how can I explain this? 
Have you ever seen the commercial screwdrivers that have advertisements on it where they have a, they're only about yay long, sometimes they have like a pen holder where they could, you could put it on your um, on a piece of paper and it'll stay on a piece of paper or you could put it in your pocket or pocket protector, whatever. Okay, they're short screwdrivers about yay long and they have a screwdriver on one side and a small round magnet on the other side. That's where these came, these magnets came from. I ended up pulling them out because we ended up throwing, we had a shitload of these uh, screwdrivers from other companies that were advertisements for their product or, or their company or whatever. And uh, I ended up plucking the magnets off of the back. Well, basically all they are just these little sticks that are surrounded in plastic. Take a pl pair of pliers and kind of twist it a little bit and they pull right out. So I saved them and this works perfect for pulling out sleeves. Stick it in the hole, thread it, start turning it, and you'll see that sleeve slide right up. Just like that. Now I do not see, uh, there wouldn't be a wire on this side, that's for sure, it'll be on the other side. All right, so let's check this side out. And this could be a problem with these guitars as well, because Wally in the Box said, that his other one was buzzing a lot and he couldn't figure out why and to be honest with you I'm not seeing a ground wire here nor am I seeing a ground wire here huh That's kind of weird. See, I like this. Just starts pulling it right out without having to take anything and wedging it like this or uh, using any type of a pry tool. Just slides right out that way, works out perfect. All right, so those are out. Uh, I'm gonna clip out uh, my wire cutters. Now these pickups, I'm gonna, all of the electronics I'm sending back to Wally. He can use the pickups for something else if he wants to. So I'm not going to clip and cut these wires really short. I'm basically gonna cut them right at their connections. like that. Now, see this wire is stuck in there, but yeah, see? I don't know if it was touching anything because there was... Hmm. Clip that, because I don't want that to scratch the finish. Now I started looking, ever since uh, I've got this one, I started looking online at some of the fireflies, and I tell you what, they got some I don't know how the quality is of them, but they have some decent guitar bodies. Again, you know, quality varies, but the bodies actually look pretty good. So I'm probably going to end up using these pickup surrounds for their new pickups. I ordered a set of Wilkinsons. Um, they are a, for the bridge, it is a 7 point something ohm, and for the neck, Oh wait, for the neck it's a 7 point something ohm, and for the bridge it's like a 14 point something, almost 15 ohms. Alright, so it looks like they did put some shielding paint inside here, and again, you know, these are a no name, they are wax potted. Yeah, nothing, nothing fancy about these. So these pickups will have the plastic on them already, so when I give these back to Wally, they're going to be with the plastic. And let's get this one out. So like I said, I'll be using these pickup surrounds for the new pickups and uh, sending him the old pickups with the plastic already on them. The old guitar, like I said, that's going to be completely stock. And again, no, no name. Just marked for a bridge and neck. 
All right, so these guys here, I'm gonna pluck these out. And what I do is I got this little tool here, make sure it's clean, and I don't pry on these very hard. I just kind of wiggle them a little bit. Because these are kind of brittle and they will break. And hopefully I can reuse these to keep the look of the guitar get up to a certain point and pop them right off. And this being plastic, it's not really denting the body because it is flexible. it for those. Alright, see, is this going to be loose on me? No, it's tight. And that's where this tool comes in handy for. Just like that. Alright, so now I gotta get these guys. These guys are gonna be what, maybe a 10 millimeter or so? Yep. Oh, they're not even tight. I can unscrew them with Wow, these were only hand tightened. This one's stuck to the wood, huh? You know, I'm not going to pry that one off because I don't know if it's going to take the clear with it. Look at that, everything came out. Right, let's see what kind of a switch do they use. Well, just a basic no-name switch. Nothing big, nothing fancy. Hmm. Alright, so the output jack is going to stay. Wow, it feels so much lighter now. This will stay. I don't need to remove this at all, but I do need to remove the plastic off of it. So what I've got going on over here is going to be uh, a Wilkins's roller bridge and just a basic tail stop which will be the original tail stop that came with this guitar so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the drop this down because I don't want these to go sliding across so I've got the Wilkinson's bridge and as you can see it's two tones so it's going to match the black and the chrome on the pickup and when I have the tailpiece, tailpiece is going to be black on both sides with the black screws and chrome tailpiece. That'll go with the bridge and then it'll also go with the pickups. So that's what I'm doing with this. All right, so now I've got the old body here, the one that had the broke broken neck on it and I'm going to try to see if I can release this and hopefully everything stays in one piece right that's what one hopes all right I love these little pads put my clamp away all right so so far let's see here put this on my shoulder Oh yeah, the neck ain't going nowhere. The neck is not going anywhere. So again, I'm gonna drill this hole out and put a longer screw inside there, which I have to drill out because it's filled with wood glue now. All right. 
So that's done. I can go ahead and put this drill bit away. One thing I like to do is keep my tools where I need them when I'm done using them. And always keep your chuck or your key with your chuck. This way you never lose it. And I gotta do some cleanup on this thing. Get some perhaps a little bit of wood glue on it. All right, so I've got a, again, longer screw compared to the old one. Put the strap lock on it. And the head fits just fine inside the head uh, strap lock where it's not going to be protruding out. Go ahead and thread my rubber washer. Go ahead and put the screw in the body, through the body into the neck. And again, this will hold it from breaking again. Now I do want to start over with these electronics because I'm going to use everything that's here that came with the guitar but I'm going to rewire it and start over again from scratch. Alright. So now all I have to do is deal with the crack, which that needs to be sanded on both sides, and use some thin, very thin CA glue to fill that, and hopefully can make it go away. All right, so I need to pluck out, I need to pluck out one of these guys to find out if there's a ground in there or not. See, this is kind of weird. It looks like they tried to put some uh, shielding tape inside here, but they wiped it out or something. I don't know. So what is it? They didn't drill this. They didn't drill this one deep enough. So I'm going to use one magnet instead of two. Nice. Slides right up. Alright, so there is no wire inside there, so I can put this back. Put that back in there. Now, you really shouldn't do this, but I am anyways. Using the end of a screwdriver to put that in. Alright, so it might be inside there. Let's see if this one was it drilled out as far? Yeah, that was the same way. Okay, so I do see a wire in this one. It does have a wire inside there, and it's wrapped around really nice. So it did have a wire. Hmm. I don't know why this thing was buzzing so much if it was the head away. Another thing that was kind of weird with this too is this one here had a cream color for the three-way switch and this one's got a black one for the three-way switch. There's nothing on this body. Well, okay, I can't say there's nothing on this body that's cream color, but the headstock. All right, so I'm pulling this wire out. Yeah, that was in there. That was actually in there. And I'm going to clip it. I'll clean up all the solder and everything off of everything when I get done with this. So let me see where my glass is at. Let's see if anything can explain what would be causing the buzz. Well, not really. Hmm. Yeah, I don't see anything here that would be causing anything to be buzzing off of each other. Hmm, interesting. All right, so where's my multimeter at? Here it is. One thing I want to check with this is, what are these pickups? 
So here is, this is the neck pickup. I'm going to strip a little bit off of here. Let's see what the ohms are of these guys. Ground. That's better. So there are 7.55 for the neck neck pickup. Let's see what the bridge pickup is. Alright. I don't have to strip anything back on that. And this is a 9.60, 9 well, it's a 9.58, 9.59, bounces a little bit. So that's what these are. So they're not really that high of an output of a pickup. Let's see what the two new ones are. So this is a neck off the new body. They're probably the same, more than likely. Like the way I strip wires. Okay, so that's a 760, that's the neck. They're probably the same. I doubt they're different. Yeah, they're the same. Alright, so they're a little on the weaker side, so that'll be a nice a nice little tone. It wouldn't be uh, really crunchy and shit like that. It's not a very high output uh, pickup. All right, so I need to address this before I do anything else because I want to fix this. And again, you know, there's a little bit of a wear mark over here from when they buffed it. So I got to wet sand this over here, really nice. Real get it real smooth so you don't feel that lip. And that crack. So this thing feels like it feels like it's holding good. And I put some pressure on it too. Alright, so this one here is going to get an all new rewiring. Uh, it's going to get buffed out a little bit. I can see where it got scratched from the tailpiece kind of floating around over here. Um, I gotta fix this crack on this both sides of the neck. Tuners are staying. Truss rod's gonna be adjusted. Nuts gonna go. Bridge, tailpiece, stay. Pickup, stay. Electronics, stay. This one's gonna be just bone stock. So when he gets it, now I don't know if he wants me to put the, I don't know if he wants me to put that pick art on this one here. It's probably in the other box that this one came in. But I'm not, I don't, I don't like pick guards. I mean, why would you cover something that has a real nice quilted flamed or, or spalted maple top on it, why would you want to cover that up with a pickguard? Even on Stratocasters, you know, like a, um, a Fender Strat, and they got that big ass pickguard over here that's covering up half the body or a good portion of the body, and you see like a flame maple or, or even the sunburst where you can see the wood grain through the uh, lighter color of the stain that's on the wood. Um, why would you want to cover that up? I mean, it just looks so nice to see that. All right, so here you see book matched quilted maple veneer. 
And these are on the real thin side. Wow. Here's another piece. Got a set of two. Really nice. Unreal. So the reason why I'm buying a lot of these veneers is I plan on making quite a few guitars. Once I get done with everything else that I'm doing, um, it's probably maybe a going to be a winter thing. Maybe I'm not sure, or a fall thing. But uh, is when I'm going to get started with doing this. And what I plan on doing is ordering more blank bodies and ordering more necks, and then using the veneers that I have use up all the veneers uh, and just start building some guitars. Now, as far as what I'm gonna end up doing with these guitars is I'm gonna end up selling them, okay? Putting them up on eBay and stuff. Um, I'm gonna use good hardware, uh, good electronics. I'm not gonna skimp out on uh, the quality of the parts that I'm gonna put into this thing. And I'm also going to want it to look like really flashy, you know, really pop out at you. So like something like this here, I'd put like a, a black tint over it, sand it down, and then hit it with a light blue. And then clear coat or epoxy resin over it, and it give it that depth and that look, and then start doing that routing and everything else that I need to do on the body. But first have the body already pre-cut. Um, so I'm going to probably be working in reverse with this. So I'll end up putting the veneer on the wood, gluing that down, getting all the bubbles out, putting some weight on top of it, using either freehand or make my own template of the design of a guitar body that I want to use for it or build. Uh, get that cut out and finished around the edges, okay? And before I do any drilling or any routing or anything, I'll have the net pocket cut out on it. But as far as like the pickup cavities, the control cavities, where the bridge is going to go and everything else, um, that will be done after all the epoxying and stuff is done. That way it's going to have a nice flat look to it. There's not going to be any curved bends going into the uh, uh, any of the openings and it'll be nice and flat front and back. I've got the templates to do everything that I need to do as far as routing goes and cutting out for cavities. Um, so yeah, that's what I plan on doing with this. So my other unboxing, I am gonna keep this like this because it's gonna protect it, keep it clean and nice and flat. The other unboxing that I have, well, this is something that you guys probably have seen several times because I bought several of this. And it is more more of the same epoxy resin that I've been using. This stuff works really good. Uh, I go through it like it's water. And uh, yeah, I just, I love the way it comes out. For my finishes on my guitars, uh, you'll find that the bodies will be epoxy. And the shit's almost bulletproof. It protects the wood and this whole shit about the wood must breathe um i really think that that's bullshit uh you know you're you're coating a piece of wood with any type of a liquid that makes it's hard after it dries regardless of, if it's a lacquer or epoxy or polyurethane or anything else that uh, it's not making letting the wood breathe that wood is still it's sealed so yeah this is no different all right, guys, so that's it for today. I hope that the information about the Firefly Neck is um, useful to you guys to help you guys fix your own if you should come up with the same problem. It is somewhat of an easy fix if you have the right tools and definitely going to need a clamp, something to protect the fretboard or the back of the body on that clamp. And it has to be a, a good clamp, you know, not like something like this big, you know, this is, this is for hobbyist shit and you know, you're not going to get anywhere with this. You need something that is going to be able to really squeeze, get a good squeeze out between the neck and the body. And, uh, yeah. So that's my story and I'm sticking to it guys. Thanks for watching. Catch you later. Have a good one. Take it easy. Enjoy your week.